Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Parks Fly Shops Fly Tying Video for the 24th of February 2010. Uh, sorry for the delay in getting videos out for the last couple weeks. Uh, I had a death in the family I had to take care of and then uh, was basically playing catch up with uh, other stuff. Um, fly I'm going to be doing today is a Ram Caddis and there's several reasons I'm interested in doing this one. First off, um, well it's a good fly. Uh, it's a caddis imitation, caddis pupa, caddis larva imitation, and uh, one of the big reasons I'm looking to do it here is the other fly on YouTube right now that's listed as a ram caddis is actually a uh, serendipity. And the serendipity is kind of evolved from this fly. Um, the story I heard is that a guy was sitting down to tie some ram caddis and he didn't have any of the uh, hen hackle that's necessary for the color on this fly and so instead he used deer hair and that's how the serendipity came about and this is no longer really a very popular fly in the Yellowstone area and it should be um, people are mostly using the serendipity where they previously like in the 80s early 90s would have used this fly and that's actually kind of brought its popularity with the fish up because they see less of them um, so it's a good good basic caddis pattern, kind of a, a switch up fly. You can fish it either on a dead drift or swung as a wet fly. Uh, it's also a good choice when fished behind a streamer. This color combination, the olive, white, and black, is kind of the classic combination and it's a very good choice here on the Yellowstone in, in late April and early May uh, when we get our Mother's Day caddis hatch. Okay, uh, tying the ram caddis. The hook I'm using here is a size 14 scud hook and size 8 aught olive done uni thread. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bind down my rib which is copper brown size brassy ultra wire. I'm going to bind that down most of the way down the shank and slightly down the bend. And then the body I'm using on this fly is kind of a departure from the original. It's the same stretch flex, life flex material, wonder wrap, variety of names, spandex material that I've used on a variety of flies already. Uh, it's good, good material, and it's actually one of the things it's marketed as is as, as a floss replacement. It's more durable than a floss. It's easier to work with, and uh, it looks about the same when it's wrapped on the hook. So it's a very easy transition to make. And you can do a lot of different combinations of body and rib, although you kind of want to keep the same sort of basic template, flat body with a wire rib. You could do this fly in purple with a silver rib, red with a gold or silver rib, um, amber with a gold or copper rib, black with a gold rib. You can use a variety of different combinations depending on what you're trying to imitate or what you're trying to do. There's a good, imi uh, good detractor nymph as well as a more imitative caddis. First thing I'm going to do is make a wrap or two of the body material behind the rib and then I'm going to wrap it forward in touching turns. And always wrap this material under a little tension. That's uh, going to keep it tight on the body and I think it's one of the reasons why this produces a, a durable fly. I'm going to tie that off about two to two and a half eye widths back from the eye. And then I'll wrap the rib forward in about five, five to six turns. Now the wing or hackle on this fly is cream hen. And I'm going to demonstrate a method of using longer feather barbs than you'd usually use as a hackle. Uh, as you can see, these these barbs are very long. This is probably about a size size 10 to 8 to 10, probably 10 uh, cream hackle here. And I don't tie any size 10 cream or 10 hackles. I don't I don't tie any size 10 flies that require a cream hackle. And so, if I didn't use this technique, these this feather would just stay on the neck and be useless. And this is so. This is a good good way of getting more utility out of a wet fly neck if you're not tying a full size range using it. So what I'm going to do here is even out uh, a section of barbs 
and then pluck those, trying to keep the tips even. And then I'll trim off the very the very base of each, uh, just because you'll often pull off a little bit of the feather stem and so on, and you want those barbs to be separate. I'm going to try to keep those barbs uh, as even as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Look kind of like that. If I was tying a hair's ear soft tackle, I'd right now tie these facing in forward and then finish the rest of the fly behind the fly or behind the hackle and then sweep those barbs back and tie them off with just a couple thread wraps uh, to preserve the kind of small head you like on a traditional soft tackle. This fly, since it has a head in front of the hackle, I don't have to do that, so I'll just tie them facing straight back. Now I want those barbs to be slightly longer than the body. So I'm going to measure those against the body to, the, to get them about the length I want, grab them with my other hand, and just take one, two loose wraps. Then the next step, just kind of spread those barbs around using your fingers. And then tighten up with one to two tight thread wraps. Then I like to look at it and make sure everything's kind of situated. And what frequently happens is you'll find you don't have quite enough barbs on the bottom, so you'll back off a little bit and then move a few more around. Now that method doesn't produce a perfect head, or I'm sorry, a perfect tackle, but it looks pretty much the same and I'm sure it works exactly the same. We uh, probably do this on, on, I'd be willing to bet, close to half of our soft tackles here in the shop and it doesn't make any difference. I, I use them interchangeably and, and don't notice the fish telling any difference. The head I'm going to be using here is just a black synthetic dubbing. It's, it's actually synthetic nymph dubbing and so it's a little bit, a little bit coarse. And I'm going to wrap that so it's fairly round in overall shape. A little more dubbing. You could use peacock hurl, ostrich hurl, really any kind of dubbing you like. Uh, the traditional pattern, I'm sure, you used a natural dubbing. Um, one thing I, I personally wouldn't want to use would be a really flashy dubbing, like a ice dub, something like that. And if you were tying this fly with a bead head, which I will sometimes do. Um, you'd want to use the bead as part of the head. You'd only want to do about two turns of dubbing right behind the bead. And there is a completed ram caddis. Uh, you can fish the fly on a dead drift, you can fish it stripped or swung, especially trailing another streamer. Um, one thing I'll do often, if I'm planning on fishing it on the swing, what I would tie it on, I'd tie it on a, a straight shank hook. Uh, if I was going to fish it as a dropper nymph underneath a dry fly, I'd probably tie it with a bead head almost all the time, either glass or brass or even tungsten. Um, but since I, this one, since it doesn't have the bead but it's tied on a curved shank hook, I'll probably be fishing it on a dead drift, but I'll be fishing it with another nymph, like a stonefly nymph or a, a lead eye woolly bugger, something like that to get it down into the deep holes. Uh, it's a good fly, it's a good, good change up fly, and you ought to give it a, give it a try. As always, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please let us know. I'll take one more moment here to plug uh, the fact that I'm working on a manual of Parks Fly Shop fly patterns. Uh, it's going to be about 150 pages, including color photos, and I expect that to be finished around the 1st of May, and I am taking pre-orders. Have a good day.